good evening to all of you a very warm welcome to the discussion on finance and accounts for managers organized by indira gandhi national open university through its study center tevara college sh college tevara friends yesterday we have discussed the accounting concepts accounting standards and the analysis of financial statements namely the balance sheet and the profit and loss account today we are going to discuss the cash flow statement fund flow statement etc with regard to the cash flow statement it is a statement showing cash inflow and cash outflow in short we can say a receipts and payment account cash inflow and cash outflow the opening balance of cash opening balance of bank balances all receipts by way of fixed asset sale all receipts by way of operational income all collections from customers all other revenue as well as capital receipts we have to show in the cash flow statement under receipt side similarly we have to show the payments by way of purchase of fixed assets repayment of loans and operating expenses etc and finally we have to show the closing cash balance and closing bank balance therefore a cash flow statement is a statement showing a summary of receipts and payments the next item is the fund flow statement a fund flow statement is a statement showing source of funds and application of funds the source of funds consists of the following items number 1 funds from sale of fixed assets funds from long term borrowings funds from issue of share capital then funds from cash generated from business operation then we have to show the sale of machinery in the outflow side that is application of funds we have to show the purchase of fixed assets or machinery furniture building land etc then we have to show the payment of dividend we have to show the expenditure by way of interest on term loans we have to show the repayment of capital or long term borrowings or debentures we have to show the increase in working capital in the source of funds we have to show decrease in working capital i may repeat a fund flow statement is a statement showing sources of funds and application of funds in the case of sources of funds by way of say sale of fixed assets in the case of sources of funds the funds generated from business operation in the case of sources of funds the increase in 
long term borrowings and we have to show the decrease in working capital i repeat in the case of application of funds the funds utilized for the purpose of purchase of long term assets or fixed assets for example plant and machinery building furniture etc we have to show the payment of dividend the repayment of long term borrowings such as debentures and other term loans and finally we have to show increase in working capital therefore as fund flow statement is a statement showing sources and uses of funds it gives you an idea about the financial position and financial transactions during the year comparing the previous year figure and the current year figure and finding out the difference and the operational profit therefore a fund flow statement is a statement showing sources and uses of funds today we are going to illustrate how to find out the sources and uses of funds as well as the increase or decrease in working capital i would like to mention about working capital at this point of time a working capital is a statement showing the current assets and current liabilities working capital is equal to the difference between current assets and current liability yesterday we have discussed what are current assets and what are current liabilities i repeat in the case of current assets cash in hand cash at bank sundry debtors closing stock prepaid expenses loans and advances in the case of current liabilities sundry creditors outstanding expenses outstanding bills payable all these are coming under current assets current liabilities therefore a working capital is a statement showing the difference between current assets and current liabilities working capital is the availability of funds for day to day operation working capital means it is the funds available for day to day operations in the case of working capital we can compare the working capital with the blood in the human body suppose the blood is not circulating in the human body the total system may collapse the person may die therefore working capital is something like a blood in the human body it should circulate starting from cash bank to raw materials to work in progress to production then finished goods then sale of finished goods then amount receivable from customers then again coming to cash again coming to raw material work in progress again coming to finished goods then finished goods into sales sales into account receivable or customers account and customers account to cash this is what is called a working capital cycle at this point of time you know why i have mentioned about working capital because in the fund flow statement one of the items showing in the source of funds is decrease in working capital and if it is a increase in working capital it should be shown as uses of funds or application of funds this fund flow statement can be 
prepared based on current year balance sheet and previous year balance sheet that is a changes from opening balance or last year balance sheet to this year balance sheet this is what is called a fund flow statement to make it more clear let me illustrate one example i will show you the presentation so that it will be more clear to all of you so i have mentioned about working capital working capital is a statement of source i mean current assets minus current liability and the difference between current assets and current liability is called working capital which means ca minus cl is equal to wc or working capital therefore in order to find out the statement of sources and uses of funds we need to find out the increase or decrease in working capital this is what we are going to discuss friends we are discussing the topic finance and accounts for managers for the mba program and i know that the students are from various places all over the world not only in india and outside india therefore to make it more effective i would like to show you an illustration all of you may please listen this statement the following information and balance sheet relate to thomsons limited a company this is the balance sheet of thomsons limited as on 31st december those who have missed the yesterday's balance sheet analysis plus you can also see the balance sheet and understand various terms used i will repeat again for the benefit of those who are not able to attend yesterday's class here a balance sheet is a statement showing assets and liabilities we can see the assets year 1 year 2 particular column assets year 1 that is at the end of the year maybe 31st december and year 2 at the end of the year 31st december the first year and the second year in the first year we have cash balance 10000 second year cash balance 15000 receivables that is called sundry debtors which means amount collected to be collected or amount receivable from customers are called receivables or sundry debtors 20000 25000 inventory inventory means closing stock closing stock includes raw materials work in progress finished goods and tools and spares first year 20000 second year 35000 plant and machinery at cost that means original purchase cost year 1 85000 year 2 85000 less accumulated depreciation what do you mean by depreciation depreciation is nothing but the wear and tear or we can call it as the loss of value on account of the you know reduction in price or wear and tear so depreciation may be on account of two reasons one reduction in value two on account of uh, wear and tear with regard to depreciation 
if you purchase a laptop today and you are selling it tomorrow the price may be less even within one day the price may change suppose you purchase a car today for rupees 10 lakhs and the due to wear and tear the market value of the car after one year may be 8 lakhs or 8.5 lakhs therefore the difference between the resale value and the original cost is called a depreciation therefore depreciation may be on account of two reasons one reduction in value two wear and tear therefore if you look at the balance sheet land and missionary original cost is 85000 Accum accumulated depreciation 15000 what do you mean by accumulated depreciation accumulated depreciation means the depreciation for the period of purchase to till today that means the date of purchase up to this balance sheet date is the accumulated depreciation it is not the depreciation for that year it is the depreciation up to that year accu accumulated therefore the 85,000 is the planned and missionary original cost and accumulated depreciation is 15,000 and in the case of year 2 original cost is 85,000 accumulated depreciation is 10,000 you can look at the original cost as on the year end 85,000 year 1 year 2 also 85,000 whereas accumulated depreciation is 15,000 naturally this accumulated depreciation should increase from 15,000 to a figure more than 15,000. That is not happening. I will tell you the reason later. Please note, original cost of missionary 85,000, year 1. Original cost of missionary 85,000, year 2. Accumulated depreciation 15,000, year 1. Accumulated depreciation 10,000, year 2. That is something which we should discuss later why there is a reduction in value of accumulated depreciation therefore the total of year 1 10 plus 20 plus 20 plus 85 minus 15 is equal to 120000 and year 2 15 plus 25 plus 35 plus 85 minus 10 that is 150000 therefore if you see the the net value after charging depreciation of plant and missionary year one is 85,000 minus 15,000 it comes to 70,000 and year two 85,000 minus 10,000 it comes to 75,000 therefore in the asset side total 10 plus 20 plus 20 plus 75 is equal to 120 15 plus 25 plus 35 plus 75 is equal to 150. This is the balance sheet asset side. Now we will go to the liability side of the balance sheet. In the liability side, you can see the sundry creditors. Sundry creditors means amount payable to suppliers, or we can call it as payables or the amount payable to suppliers year one eight thousand year two ten thousand the outstanding expense means expenses payable maybe salary payable rent payable electricity charges payable etc therefore the amount payable first year seven thousand second year ten thousand then next item debunches debunches payable means it is something like borrowing debunches are long term loans debunches carrying interest it is a certificate on the basis of loan taken it may be from the public or from various institutions so the debunger carrying interest debenture is not a capital it is not a share capital it is purely a long term borrowing so debenture payable 10000 first year 
the debenture payable 5000 second year that means originally the debenture payable was 10000 during the year 5000 paid balance is 5000 in the case of long term borrowings long term loans long term loans means loan taken for a period more than one year or three years whatever may be so more than one year it is treated as long term loans year one 5000 and year two you can see 25000 that means originally 5000 loan increased to 25000 therefore there is an increase of loan during the year 25000 minus 5000 and we have capital this capital may be equity share capital and preference share capital as i mentioned yesterday equity share capital they are owners of the company preference share capital they are also owners but they have a preferential right over the dividend if there is a dividend they have a preferential right over the assets of the company at the time of winding up so the capital originally 50000 year to 50000 there is no increase or decrease in capital retained earnings retained earning means the surplus reserves and surplus that means the surplus on account of the operation of the company financial operation or financial activities operating activities etc so the net surplus out of activities of the company is shown as retained earnings it is first year 40000 second year 50000 friends you can see the liability side of the balance sheet year 1 sundry debtors 8000 outstanding 7000 debentures 10000 long term loans 5000 capital 50000 surplus or retained earnings 40000 the total is 120000 and year 2 we can see 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 25 plus 50 plus 50 it comes to 150000 you can see the balance sheet of this company total assets year 1 120000 and year 2 120000 therefore asset equal to liability and year 2 150000 total assets and year 2 150000 total assets therefore total asset is equal to total liabilities now the, this is the first part of the question now we are going to discuss what are the additional information given after discussing the balance sheet they provided the following information what are the information they said net profit for the period after charging rupees 5000 on account of depreciation was rupees 20000 that means the net profit of the company during the year after providing depreciation of 5000 during the year is rupees 20000 that means net profit before depreciation is 20 plus 5000 uh, that is the cash generated from business operation which means if you add net profit 20 plus depreciation that is what is called cash generated or funds generated now having said this they said a piece of equipment costing rupees 25000 on which depreciation accumulated in the amount of rupees 10000 was sold for rupees 10000 what does it mean a piece of equipment may be plant and machinery which original cost is 25000 and the accumulated depreciation is 10000 that means the original cost is 25000 minus depreciation up to this year up to the date of sale is 10000 therefore the net value after depreciation that is 
return on value what is called a return on value or diminishing value diminishing value or return on value means a value after depreciation that means 25000 original cost depreciation up to the date date of sale 10000 therefore the net value that is that is the return on value that is the value after depreciation 25000 minus 10000 which is 15000 and friends this machinery is sold for rupees 10000 which means 25000 minus 10000 is the return on value after charging depreciation that is 15000 which is sold for rupees 10000 means the loss on account of sale of machinery is 15000 minus 10000 which is 5000 rupees i hope all of you who have understood i repeat original cost of machinery is 25000 accumulated depreciation is 10000 return on value is 15000 sale value is 10000 therefore loss on sale of asset is 5000 now further they say dividend paid during the year amounted to rupees 10000 dividend is not a not an expenditure dividend means sharing of profit dividend is out of profit only therefore when you say dividend paid it is not an expenditure it is a sharing of profit which is 10000 now this is the question my dear friends number 1 the statement showing changes in working capital a statement showing changes in working capital and sources and uses of funds sources and uses of funds let us see how we can solve this once again you see the balance sheet they said information is given with regard to shamsons limited in this they say this is the balance sheet assets liabilities further they say net profit after charging depreciation 5000 is rupees 20000 and equipment costing 25000 was sold for rupees 10000 and its accumulated depreciation is 10000 and dividend paid is 10000 the question is a statement showing changes in working capital and sources and uses of funds now how to start before solving the above problem let us rearrange the balance sheet in a systematic way here particulars year 1 year 2 assets cash 10000 15000 receivables 20,000, 25,000, inventory, 20,000, 35,000, plant and missionary, 85,000, 85,000, and total cost, 1 lakh, the total assets, 1 lakh 35,000, 1 lakh 60,000. Why the total changes? Because the accumulated depreciation, instead of deducting from the asset side, we are showing in the liability side that accumulated depreciation 15,000, 10,000. That is why the balance sheet total changed. Now let us proceed the liabilities of and the capital. Sundry creditors 8,000, 10,000. Outstanding expenses 7,000, 10,000. Accumulated depreciation 15,000, 10,000. Debentures payable 10,000, 5,000. Term loans. 5000 25000 capital 50000 50000 retained earnings 40000 50000 and total liabilities 135000 and 160000 therefore total asset is equal to total liabilities year 1 135000 
year and liabilities one lakh thirty five thousand. Year two one lakh sixty thousand and total liabilities year two one lakh sixty thousand. What we have done is we have rearranged the balance sheet in a systematic manner, starting from cash, receivables, inventory, and fixed assets, and liabilities, creditors, outstanding expenses, accumulated depreciation, debentures payable, long-term loans, retained earnings, etc. Now, having said this, let us start with the solving the problem. You should know what is the question. The question is. Prepare a statement of changes in working capital. And second question is, prepare a statement of sources and uses of funds. Friends, this is what is required in our question. We have to prepare sources and application. And we have to prepare statement showing changes in working capital. These are the two statements to be prepared for the purpose of completing this question. Now, for that purpose, we are going to start opening of several accounts. First one is retained earnings account. Second one is planned and missionary account. And third one is accumulated depreciation account. I repeat, for the purpose of finding out the solution, they asked to prepare the statement of changes in working capital and the funds flow statement. These are the two statements required. For the purpose of preparing these two statements, we are going to prepare retained earnings account, that is working sheet, planned and missionary account, that is also working sheet and we have accumulated depreciation account therefore first of all let us see what is a fund flow statement i repeat what is a fund flow statement a fund flow statement is a statement showing sources and application sources of sale of machinery funds from operation long term loan and the application is Purchase of missionary, payment of dividend, debentures paid, increase in working capital. This is what is called a statement of fund flow statement or statement of sources and application. And we have a statement showing changes in working capital. I said working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. What is current asset? A current asset is a asset which is short term. What is current liability? A current liability is a liability which is short term. A short term asset is called a current asset. A short term liability is called a current liability. Therefore, we are going to prepare what is short term assets, what is long term assets. Then we will see what is the changes increase or decrease now we are going back to the balance sheet once again friends what are the short term assets and what are the long term assets all of you may please listen the balance sheet and identify long term and short term assets if it is a short term asset it will go to statement of changes in working capital. If it is a long term asset, it will go to statement of sources and uses or application of funds. Make it very clear, very easy to understand. Short term assets, changes in working capital. Long term assets, sources and uses of funds or fund flow statement. Similarly, in the case of long term capital or long term funds it will go to statement of uses or sources in the fund flow statement in the case of short, short term liabilities it will go to statement of changes in working capital because 
Working capital means current assets minus current liability. Now, friends, let us start with the preparing the statement of changes in working capital. I am going to show you the statement of changes in working capital. Please remember the balance sheet, cash, receivables, inventory are short term assets or current assets. Year 1, year 2. Please remember these figures. Cash, year 1, 10,000. Receivables, year 1, 20,000. Inventory, 20,000. So you can remember these three figures. 10, 20, 20, cash, receivables, inventory. I am going to show you the statement of changes in working capital year 1. 10, 10, 10, 20, 20. You can see cash or bills receivable or account receivable or inventory. So first year 10,000, 20,000, 20,000. Total is 50,000. Let us go back to the balance sheet once again. Year 2, cash 15,000, receivables 25,000, inventory 35,000. Let us see the statement of changes in working capital. Year 2, 15,000, 25,000, 35,000. So the total is 75,000. I hope it is clear to you. We have a statement of changes in working capital. We have current assets. We have taken the current assets are short term assets, cash, receivables, inventory, year 1, 50,000, year 2, 75,000. You can see increase or decrease in the fourth column. So first year 10, second year 15, difference is 5,000. 20, 25, 5,000. 20, 35, 15,000. That's just for your information. Therefore, let us consider the total current assets year 1, 50,000, year 2, 75,000. Now, we will come to the balance sheet once again. We are going to discuss the short term liabilities. You can see the short term liabilities, namely sundry creditors and outstanding expenses. 8,000, 7,000, year 1. You can see 8,000, 7,000, year 1. And you can see year 2, 10,000, 10,000. You can see year 2, 10,000, 10,000. Therefore, the total current liability year 1 is 8,000 plus 7,000 is equal to 15,000. Year 2, 10,000 plus 10,000 is equal to 20,000. Therefore, total current liability 15,000 and 20,000 respectively for year 1 and year 2. Now, working capital. You can see working capital is CA minus CL. That is A, total A minus total B. What is total A? Current asset, 50,000. What is total B? Current liability, 35,000. Therefore, 50,000 minus 35,000 is equal to 20,000. That is, sorry, 50,000 minus 15,000 is equal to 35,000. That means total current asset A is equal to 50,000. Total current liability B is equal to 15,000. A minus B, 50,000 minus 15,000 is equal to 35,000. Similarly, year 2, current assets, 75,000. Current liability, 20,000. Difference is 75,000 minus 25,000. 20,000 is equal to 15,000. Therefore, a statement showing changes in working capital. You can see whether it is an increase or decrease. Year 1, working capital is 35,000. Year 2, working capital is 15,000. The difference is 55,000 minus 35,000 is equal to 20,000. Therefore, 
35,000 increase from year 1 to 55,000. Therefore, the net increase during the year is 20,000. This is what is asked in question number 1. They say statement showing changes in working capital. The second question is sources and uses of funds. You can see a statement showing sources and uses or application of funds. Here you can see the heading. All of you may please remember the heading. Sale of machinery is a source of funds. Funds generated from business operation is a source of funds. The increase in long term loan is a source of funds. Similarly, application. Purchase of plant and machinery is an application. Payment of dividend is an application. Debentures paid is an application. And increase in working capital is an application. If it is a decrease in working capital, it will be source of funds. In this example, it is an increase in working capital. Now, let us see how we have obtained this statement from the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, you have short term assets and long term assets. Short term liabilities and long term liabilities. I said short term assets, statement of changes in working capital. Long term assets in the statement showing sources and uses of funds. Similarly, in the case of long term, short term liability, statement of changes or in working capital. And in the case of long term liabilities, it should be shown in the sources and uses of funds. Therefore, if you have noticed that cash we have taken, receivables we have taken, inventory we have taken, but what is not taken is plant and missionary, which is not considered. That is what we are going to consider. Therefore, in the case of liability side, we have considered sundry creditors, we have considered outstanding expenses, we have to consider, we have not considered accumulated depreciation, now we have to consider accumulated depreciation, we have to consider debentures payable, we have to consider long term loans, we have to consider capital, we have to consider retained earnings, because these are long term liabilities or long term funds. Now, friends, first we will consider planned and missionary. Opening balance 85,000, closing balance 85,000. We don't know whether there is any purchase or sale, but it is very clear from the question that there is a sale of missionary. You can see a piece of missionary or equipment costing rupees. 25,000 on which depreciation accumulated in the amount of rupees 10,000 was sold for rupees 10,000. That means there is a sale of missionary for rupees 10,000. That means if this there is a sale, the missionary cost 85,000 will surely come to 85 minus 25 because the original cost of missionary sold was 25. Therefore, 85,000 minus 25,000, it must be, it must be 60,000, but you can see 85,000. Therefore, there is sale as well as purchase. Here you can see sale of missionary, 85,000 minus 25,000, that means 25,000 rupees. And in order to find out after the original cost after sale of missionary, 85,000 minus 25,000, 60,000 is the balance of missionary at cost. But here, 85,000 is the balance of missionary at cost, which means that there is a purchase of missionary for rupees 25,000. Similarly, friends, in the case of accumulated depreciation, 15,000. Out of it, the accumulated depreciation of the missionary sold for rupees 25,000, I mean, missionary sold 
which original cost was 25,000 was 5,000. That means 15,000 minus accumulated depreciation on machinery sold is 5,000. 15,000 minus 5,000 must be 10,000. 15,000 minus 5,000, 10,000. Similarly, debentures payable, opening balance 10,000, closing balance 5,000, which means there is a repayment of debentures with 5,000 rupees, which means 10,000 minus 5,000 is equal to 5,000. Here, long term loans 5,000 increased to 25,000, which means 5,000 plus 20,000, that is 25,000. Capital, there is no changes, 50, 50. But in the case of profit, the opening balance of surplus was 40,000 and which is increased to 50,000. We have to find out what is the profit generated during the year. What is the profit generated during the year? It is not 40 minus, 50 minus 40. It is that accumulated depreciation, the depreciation provided during the year and the loss of machinery, which is also to be considered in order to arrive this figure plus profit generated during the year. Then the net difference is 50,000. That is what we have to consider. Now, having said this, we have to see a scientific method of arriving all these figures by opening ledger accounts. What do you mean by a ledger account? A ledger account is an account showing the details of transactions and opening and closing balances. Here I have simply put the heading as retained earnings and I have taken the opening balance and the closing balance. You can see the opening balance of retained earnings is 40,000, which is a credit balance. It, this side is credit. And closing balance of retained earnings is a credit balance, which is a balance carried out. Here, balance brought down. Here, balance carried out. You will be wondering from where I got this figure. 40,000 and 50,000. I will show you. Here is the balance sheet. You can see retained earnings 40,000. Balance, opening balance, and retained earnings, closing balance 40, 50,000. Therefore, I have simply taken the opening balance 40,000, closing balance 50,000. Now, I am going to open another account which is called the plant and missionary. In the plant and missionary account, I have taken opening balance 85,000, closing balance 85,000. You will be wondering from where I got this figure. You can see the balance sheet. In the plant and missionary account, opening balance 85,000, closing balance 85,000. The same figure I have taken here, opening balance of plant and missionary 85,000 debit balance and closing balance of plant and missionary 85,000 debit balance. Now let us see the next account which is called accumulated depreciation account. In the accumulated depreciation account, opening balance 15,000, closing balance 10,000. I repeat, opening balance 15,000. Closing balance 10,000. From where I got this figure? It is from the original balance sheet only. In the balance sheet, you can see accumulated depreciation 15,000, closing balance 10,000. Therefore, the same figure I have taken here as opening balance 10,000 and closing balance 15,000. Sorry, opening balance 15,000, closing balance 10,000. Now, you can see item wise. In the balance sheet, we have taken cash, receivables, inventory, plan and missionary we have taken. So, in their asset side figures, we have considered 
either in the statement of changes or in the ledger account. Similarly, in the case of liability side, Sunday creditors we have taken in the statement of changes, outstanding expenses we have taken in the statement of changes, and accumulated depreciation we have taken in the accumulated depreciation account, opening balance 15,000, closing balance 10,000. Now, friends, what is left is debentures payable. In the case of debentures payable, opening balance with 10,000 was payable and closing 5,000 is payable, which means during the year, there is a repayment of debentures to the extent of 10,000 minus 5,000, which comes to 5,000. Now, we will go to the statement of sources and application. In the statement of sources and application, you can see the debentures paid 5,000. This 5,000 is 10,000 minus 5,000 is equal to 5,000. So that figure also we have taken. Now, long-term loans. The opening balance of long-term loan is 5,000. Closing balance of long-term loan is 25,000. The difference is 25,000 minus 5,000, which is 20,000. You can see the increase in long-term loans, 25,000 minus 5,000, it comes to 20,000, which is a source of funds. Now, what is left is capital. Opening balance 50,000, closing balance 50,000, difference is zero. Therefore, there is no increase or decrease in capital. Now we have retained earnings. In the case of retained earnings, we will see the retained earnings account. We can see retained earnings account. We have to balance brought down 40,000 to balance carried down 50,000. From where you got 40,000 and 50,000, go to the balance sheet. Cap the retained earnings, opening balance 40,000, closing balance 50,000. Therefore, friends, if you consider this balance sheet, which is given, we have taken all the figures, either in the statement of changes in working capital, or it is shown in the ledger account, or it is shown in the statement of sources and application of funds. Therefore, let us see item wise or ledger accounts. One, let us consider plant and missionary first. In the case of plant and missionary, we have opening balance 85,000, closing balance 85,000. Now, they say the notes given a missionary costing rupees 25,000 on which depreciation accumulated in the amount of rupees 10,000 was sold for rupees 10,000, which means you can see the workings of missionary. Whenever we prepare an assets on account at the cost price or purchase price, simultaneously we have to open the accumulated depreciation account also. The cost of equipment is 25,000. That is the cost. Accumulated depreciation is 10,000 debited to depreciation account. Therefore, this depreciation we are going to show in the accumulated depreciation account 10,000. Accumulated depreciation account. Accumulated depreciation account 10,000. You can see 10,000 here by opening balance 15,000, out of which the accumulated depreciation was 10,000. And this 10,000 we are going to show in the plant and missionary account. In the plant and missionary account, depreciation, accumulated depreciation, we are going to reduce 10,000. Therefore, this accumulated depreciation of 10,000, we are showing in the plant and missionary because original cost was 85,000. 
now it is reduced by 10,000 and the payment received was 10,000, the profit and loss account was 5,000, out of which accumulated depreciation is 10,000, which is we are going to reduce it or showing in the uh, plan and missionary account. Therefore, this depreciation of 10,000, we are reducing from the missionary value. Balance is 15,000. So 25,000 minus 10,000 is called 15,000. That 15,000 is the book value or the return down value or the diminishing value. I repeat, return down value. That is gross value, original cost minus accumulated depreciation is called return on value, which is 15,000. And the sale value is 10,000. That means 15,000 is worth rupees 15,000 missionary is sold for rupees 10,000. The book value of missionary worth rupees 15,000 is sold for rupees 10,000 means there is a loss of 5,000 rupees. Therefore, 5 plus 10 plus 10 is equal to 25. You can see the adjustments on account of this. A adjustments in a, on account of this is reflected in the planned and missionary account. You can see the adjustment by way of amount received 10,000. The adjustment by way of accumulated depreciation 10,000. The adjustment by way of loss on sale of missionary 5000. Therefore, the opening balance 85,000 is going to reduce with the 10 plus 10 plus 5 is equal to 25. Now you can see that 10,000 will go in the statement of changes or sources and application. That 10,000 is sale of missionary 10,000. Sale of missionary 10,000 is a source of funds and let us see what happened to the other things that is in the plan and missionary account 10,000 in the statement of source 10,000 in the plan and missionary account again 10,000 in the accumulated depreciation account plan and missionary 10,000 in the profit and loss account, which is 5,000 rupees is the loss. That will be reflected in the retained account. You can see the retained earnings account. In the retained earnings account, accumulated uh, depreciation loss. In the retained earnings account, planned and missionary loss, 5,000. Therefore, if you consider this ledger account debit side, you can see 5,000 in retained earnings account, then 10,000 in accumulated depreciation account and the bank realization is shown in the statement of sources of funds, sale of missionary 10,000. Therefore, 10 plus 10 plus 5 is equal to 25,000. That 25,000 is tallied with the plan and missionary account 10 plus 10 plus 5. This is what is called the Newton's third law, my dear friends. To every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. To every debit, there is an equal and opposite credit. In the plan and missionary, you can see 10 plus 10 plus 5, 25,000 credit. And in the accumulated depreciation account, in the statement of sources and funds and in the retained earnings 10 plus 10 plus 5 is equal to 25,000. Therefore, what I am going trying to say is in the question they say 25,000 worth of missionary accumulated depreciation 10,000 sold for rupees 10,000 which means there is a loss of 5,000. So this 5 plus 15 plus 10, 25, that is shown in the, uh, the accounts and this 10,000 is shown 
as sale of machinery which is reflected in the source of funds therefore let us consider the plant and machinery account once again you can see the plant and machinery account i said opening balance 85000 closing balance 85000 plant and machinery costing rupees 25000 was sold for rupees 10000 whose accumulated appreciation is 10000 therefore there is a loss of 5000 therefore opening balance 85000 will reduce to 60000 therefore still there is a closing balance of 85000 which means there is a purchase of machinery 25000 rupees that is what is called a balancing figure in other words in order to balance the ledger account first you total the liability side or the credit side 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus closing balance 110 extend that figure in the debit side 110 and find out the balancing figure by reducing the opening balance from 1 lakh 10,000 you will get 25,000 rupees as purchase of plant and machinery during the year friends which means that purchase of plant and machinery is a source of application of funds you can see purchase of plant and machinery 25,000 opening 85,000 sale cost price is 25,000 difference is 60,000 still there is an opening bal closing balance of 85,000 therefore there is a purchase of plant and machinery during the year which is an application of funds which is 25,000 this 25,000 is obtained from plant and machinery account which is a balancing figure those who are not able to follow in their matters we will repeat it once again don't worry about this understanding this statement this statement is very very important for our day-to-day -day life day-to-day -day activities therefore let us consider the next account which is called a accumulated depreciation account friends i told you the opening balance of accumulated depreciation account was 15000 closing balance of accumulated depreciation was 10000 and during the year a machinery costing rupees 25000 whose accumulated depreciation was 10000 which is a reduction from the opening balance no more the machinery is no more therefore we are debiting that accumulated depreciation to uh, up to this plan and machinery account therefore 10000 is a debit so opening balance 10000 debit and we have incurred a loss of rupees 5000 there is an in, there is a loss on account of accumulated depreciation of, uh, the machinery therefore the the difference oh, sorry it is not a loss the opening balance is 15,000, closing balance is 10,000, accumulated depreciation on that machinery was 10,000. There is a balance of 5,000, which is not a loss. It is an accumulated depreciation on account of the old machinery. On account of the machinery costing rupees 60,000, whose accumulated depreciation is 5,000. That means, in the case of accumulated depreciation, 15,000 was opening, 10,000 was closing. Therefore, after removing this accumulated depreciation of 10,000, so you have to balance the accumulated depreciation account by totaling the debit side 10 plus 10, 20,000, extend to the credit side 20,000, find out the balance 20 minus 15, 5,000, which is the balance in the accumulated depreciation account. So this 5,000 will continue as accumulated depreciation account. Now, the next one is the retained earnings account. In the retained earnings, as I told you, the opening balance is 40,000 and the closing balance is 50,000 and plant and machinery loss on account of sale of plant and machinery is 
debit to retained earnings account 5000 accumulated depreciation that is the depreciation which is um, provided on account of the machinery that is 5000 and we have another point which is given here you can see dividends dividend paid during the year dividend paid during the year amounted to rupees 10000 dividend paid during the year amounted to rupees 10000 i said dividend is a sharing of profit it is not an expenditure it is a share of profit which is distributed by the company to the shareholders they said during the year they paid a dividend of rupees 10000 what is adjustment you can see the dividend in the retained earnings 10000 that dividend is shown in the case of statement of funds that is fund flow statement payment of dividend 10000 so we have considered one retained earnings only left plan and missionary we have already considered 25000 as purchase of missionary then accumulated depreciation we have considered then we have considered the retained earnings lastly in the case of retained earnings opening balance was 40000 planned and missionary loss is 5000 accumulated depreciation is 5000 dividend paid is 10000 and this total balance in the case of retained earnings that is the closing balance of 50000 now we are going to balance retained earnings account for the purpose of balancing retained earnings we have to total the debit side 5000 plus 5000 plus 10000 plus 50000 which is 70000 extend that 70000 to the right hand side 70000 opening balance is 40000 70 minus 40 is equal to 30000 this 30000 my dear friends, is the funds generated from business operation during the year. This 30,000 is the funds generated from business operation during the year. You can see funds generated from business operation 30,000. So we have considered sale of machinery 10,000. Funds generated from business operation balancing figure 30,000. Long term loans increase 20,000. Total sources 10 plus 30 plus 20, that is equal to 60,000. Now, in the application side, as I told you, there is a purchase of planned and missionary 25,000. There is a payment of dividend 10,000. There is a debenture interest. Pay, debenture repayment 5000 and finally friends you can see a statement showing changes in working capital increase in working capital 20000 that increase we are showing it in the statement of fund flow statement 20000 therefore 25 plus 10 plus 5 plus 20 is equal to 60000 Total sources is 60,000. Total application is 60,000. Therefore, in the case of fund flow statement, the total sources must be equal to total application. Therefore, we have completed the answers to the questions. One, statement showing changes in working capital. Two, sources and uses of funds therefore before we go to the next item we are going to repeat whatever we have discussed today with regard to statement of sources and application of funds i said 
a statement of sources and application of funds is a fund flow statement which gives you what is the source and what is the application how you have invested in assets or short term or long term assets and how the funds were generated the sources for investment the difference between fund flow statement and cash flow statement is that in the case of fund flow statement we are considering the sources and uses of funds whereas in the case of cash flow statement we are preparing a summary of receipts and payments account showing opening balance of cash closing balance of cash or bank and receipts during the year capital receipts and revenue receipts and payments during the year capital expenditure and revenue expenditure and balance what is available so opening plus receipts minus payments is equal to closing balance this is what is called the cash flow statement whereas in the case of fund flow statement a fund flow statement is a statement showing sources and application what how you have generated the funds and how you have invested the funds this is what is called a fund flow statement for that purpose we have considered the balance sheet of charms and limited and we have rearranged the balance sheet you can see the balance sheet showing assets and liabilities short term assets long term assets short term liabilities long term liabilities year 1 year 2 and further they say the net profit after charging rupees 5000 on account of depreciation was rupees 20000 that means during the year they have provided 5000 rupees depreciation and they said 20000 is after charging depreciation therefore before charging depreciation 20 plus 5 which means 25 and further they say a missionary whose original cost is 25000 and whose depreciation is 10000 which means net depreciate net value after depreciation is 15000 sold for rupees 10000 resulting a loss of 5000 which means during the year they have net profit of 20000 after charging 5000 that means before charging 20000 i mean 5000 uh, depreciation the profit was 20 plus 5 that is 25 and there is a loss on account of sale of missionary 5000 that means friends 20 plus 5 25 plus 5 30000 which is the funds generated from business operation you see without any calculation we are arriving this funds from business operation 30000 directly without any calculation in this manner they said 20000 plus 5000 plus loss 5000 30000 we can see 30000 funds from business operation shortcut method no further workings simple method of arriving funds from business operation is 30000 which is 20000 plus depreciation plus loss on sale of machinery 20 plus 5 plus 5 is equal to 30000 and you can see a machinery for sale value is 10000 you can say 10000 rupees is the sale sale proceeds of missionary and you can see in the balance sheet there is a long term borrowings 5000 increase to 25000 which means 25 minus 5 20000 is the funds or long increase in long term loans 20000 see source of funds without any calculation we can arrive missionary funds from business operation long term loan funds from business operation means cash generated from business operation that is what is called as 
funds from business operation. So source of funds is equal to 60,000. And similarly, you can see missionary 85,000, closing balance 85,000. That means a missionary costing rupees 25,000 sold. That means 85 minus 25, 60. Again, there is a 85,000 closing balance, which means there is a sale of mission, purchase of missionary 25,000. And payment of dividend is also given in the question. Dividend paid 10,000. You can see dividend paid 10,000. You can see the balance sheet. Dividend 10,000 reduced to 5,000. 10 minus 5, 5,000. That is dividend 5,000. And balance only one item left that is increase in working capital in order to find out this 20,000 we have to prepare a statement this statement is called the working capital statement changes in working capital year one working capital cash receivables inventory total 50,000 liabilities 8,000 outstanding the creditors plus outstanding that is 15,000. So 50 minus 15, 35,000 year one working capital. And here similarly 75 minus 20, 55,000 year two working capital. There is an increase of working capital from year one 35,000 to year two 55,000 that is 20,000. Friend, you can see the statement of increase in working capital that is 20,000. How fast we could arrive these figures? Missionary, fund from business operation, long term loans, 60,000. Purchase of missionary, payment of dividend, debentures, increase in working capital, total 60,000. Sources is equal to application. So it is tallied. But for the purpose of doing in the examination, you have to show the detailed working that is why i have shown this this is a university examination term and examination question from indira gandhi national open university here you can see we have taken retained earnings opening balance and various adjustments here we have taken planned and missionary, opening balance, closing balance, and adjustments. Here you have the accumulated depreciation, opening balance, and closing balance, and adjustments. So this accumulated depreciation provided during the year is 5000. That depreciation is charged to the missionary account or the accumulated depreciation. 5000 is the closing balance on account of balance available out of 15,000. Out of 15,000, 10,000 is towards accumulated depreciation on machinery sold. Balance is the depreciation under the head accumulated depreciation opening balance. Now we can see the workings on account of sale of machinery. Original cost, accumulated depreciation, net value, sale value, loss. Therefore, friends, it is a scientific method of arriving the statement with the help of changes in working capital and various ledger accounts for the purpose of preparing sources and application of funds. So the working capital is a statement which is very, very important for the existence or for the decision making of any institute or any company or any organization since it is the lifeblood. It is the lifeblood in any organization. Now, let me consider the working capital standard norm. I said working capital is current assets minus current liability. And the ratio of working capital is current assets divided by current liability. 
the standard norm of working capital is equal to 2 is to 1. That is 2 times of asset, uh, 2 times of liability must be equal to assets. You can see the balance sheet. In the balance sheet or the statement of changes in working capital, you can see the total of current asset is 50,000 and the total of current liability is 15,000. The current assets divided by current liability, which is more than 3 is 3. That means more than 3. Here also, current asset is 75,000. Current liability is 20,000, which is more than 3 or 3.5, 3.6, etc. Therefore, it is highly liquid or the liquidity of this company is very good. That means they have sufficient money for making the immediate expenditure. That means out of 50,000, they can easily make payment of 15,000 rupees. So this is current asset is 50,000, current liability is 15,000. Therefore, we can meet the day-to-day -day expenses, salary, rent, electricity, all this they can make payment out of cash balance, amount receivable and inventory so that there is no liquidity problem. The second year also they have current assets 75,000, current liability 20,000. They can easily liquidate the current liabilities out of current assets. That means your current assets must be two times of current liability which is a standard norm. Friends, I have completed the first part of the discussion on accounting and finance for managers. That is with regard to financial statements or financial accounting. Financial accounting refers to financial statements, namely uh, the current assets, I mean, uh, namely the balance sheet and uh, profit and loss account. So with this, I am concluding the first part with, uh, first part of our discussion with regard to financial accounting. Now, I am not going to stop here. We have another uh, 35, 40 minutes. We are going to discuss the cost accounting. We are going to discuss the cost accounting. Cost accounting refers to the costing of various activities, costing, costing of products and services. You might have seen that with regard to the statement of balance sheet, with regard to the statement of profit or loss account, you are able to know the total financial position as a whole or the total profitability as a whole in the case of profit and loss account and in the case of balance sheet you are able to know what is the financial position what is your total value of assets what is your total value of liability what is your trading results with regard to trading results you can see the trading operation or manufacturing activity what is the total cost what is the total sales what is the total purchase what is the total profit but you are not able to analyze what is the cost per unit uh, how do i know what is the cost of manufacturing one pen from the financial accounting you are unable to find out what is the cost of one pen but under cost accounting, you are able to find out what is the cost of manufacturing one pen. What is the cost of sales of one pen? What is the sale value of one pen by ascertaining the cost of production of one pen? And by fixing the profit margin, you will be able to identify what must be my selling price. That is the advantage of cost accounting. Friends, 
I am going to discuss what is a cost sheet. A cost sheet is a statement showing various components of cost, starting with the uh, prime cost. What is a prime cost? What is the cost of production? What is the cost of goods sold? What is the cost of sales? What is the cost or what is the selling price? What is the profit per unit? This is what is called a cost sheet. A cost sheet is a statement showing various components of cost, starting with the prime cost. And we have cost of production, cost of goods sold, cost of sales, and sell, selling price, and say the profit price, profit margin. Now let us consider a manufacturing unit, a manufacturing unit, and that manufacturing unit we have opening stock of raw material. We have Purchase of raw material, we have closing stock of raw material. Therefore, opening stock of raw material plus purchase of raw material minus closing stock of raw material is equal to cost of raw material consumed. Consider an example of manufacturing an idli. Idli is very common all over India, not only South India, Italy. For manufacturing Italy, you need the raw material rice, raw material of rice, and you are using, uh, you, you, you have an opening balance of rice, and during the day, you have purchased the rice, and end of the day, the closing balance of rice you reduce it, you will get the net available or net rice consumed for manufacturing idli or preparing idli for breakfast. You can see the opening rice, purchase of rice, closing rice will give you the rice consumed. Then add the expenses or the May labor cost, labor, direct labor for making this rice into powder, you need labor cost and adding water, that also you need, that is what is called direct labor and direct expenses. So opening raw material, purchase less closing raw material, raw material consumed. Add direct labor for converting the rice into powder, then mixing all these requires labor, which is called a direct labor. Add the expenses, direct expenses like pouring water or salt or whatever may be. Then that is called a direct expense. So, raw material, labor, and direct expense, which is called a prime cost. We have to add the administrative expenses, or we have to consider the overhead expenses, factory expenses, all these things, you will get the cost of uh, the, the factory cost and you have to add the work in progress what is available in your kitchen yesterday's powder which is semi finished that is called work in progress that you add therefore your prime cost plus work in progress and that is opening work in progress and reduce it the closing work in progress and you will get a 
the total work in progress used during the day opening less closing then you add factory cost or factory overhead administration expense all these things will give you the administration cost or the cost of production therefore material plus labor plus overhead will give you the cost of production and during this day there is an opening balance of idli which is available in your fridge that is opening balance yesterday's finished the products or yesterday's finished the idli that you have to add along with the cost of production you will get the total reduce it the uh, closing of finished goods then you will get cost of goods sold so cost of production plus opening finished goods total minus closing finished goods you will get cost of goods sold add selling and distribution expenses then you will get cost of sales selling and distribution expenses consists of salesman salary advertisement marketing all this you have to treat it as selling and distribution of expenses so cost of goods sold plus selling and distribution expense you will get cost of sales cost of sales you know what is the total number of quantity manufactured and what is the total value or total cost of sales if you divide the cost of sales by total number of idli manufactured you will get cost per unit of idli which is available for sale that means in if you consider the cost of pen this is a pen which is given by the institute of chartered accountants of india you see the cost of manufacturing this pen let us consider there are 1000 pens manufactured and the total cost of pen manufactured may be 1 lakh rupees and divide by the number of units manufactured or sold you will get cost per pen once you know the cost per pen you can decide what is your desirable profit what is the profit you are expecting what profit you can add to compete with the market let us say 20 percent profit this profit is called the gross profit or we can say net profit we can say net profit 20 percent on the cost of sales suppose the cost of sale is 100 rupee 20 rupee is the profit you are expecting 100 plus 20 is equal to 120 rupee that 120 rupee is the selling price per unit my dear friends they spend 120 rupees selling price out of that 20 rupee is the profit on your cost of sales so 100 into 20 by 100 20 120 that is gross uh, the net profit on cost of sale is equal to 20 percent whereas net profit on selling price is not equal to 20 percent because the total sale value is 120 120 into 20 divided by 100 120 into 20 divided by 100 that means 24 percent that is only 24 percent 
120 into 20 divided by 100 that means 24 percent on selling price so 24 percent on what is that uh, percentage 120 into 20 divided by 100 that means 20 that is uh, 24 percent is uh, that means profit on cost is different from profit on selling price so if you want to arrive the profit on cost you have to calculate on the cost price if you want to arrive profit on sales you have to arrive on the uh, selling price that means 24 percent of selling price is equal to 20 percent of cost price that is how you have to work out the selling price you see the importance of cost accounting the cost accounting is a method of arriving the cost per unit that is why i have mentioned about the cost sheet i repeat a cost sheet is a statement showing the prime cost factory cost cost of, cost of production then cost of goods sold cost of sales and selling price from this it is very clear that cost of sale is different from cost of goods sold cost of goods sold is different from cost of production because the cost of production we are not considering opening and closing balance of finished goods with regard to cost of goods sold we are considering opening and closing of finished goods cost of sale is different from cost of goods sold because we are not considering selling and distribution expense with regard to cost of goods sold we are considering consider cost of sales includes selling and distribution expenses friends having said this do you think that this is a scientific method of decision making i must say no because in this method this method is only based on total cost total cost what is the total cost total cost of sales 100 rupees is the total cost 120 rupees is the selling price we are simply taking a decision of 20 rupees as profit this is absolutely wrong this is not a scientific method of decision making because we have to consider a different approach to costing that is what is called a marginal costing technique or variable costing technique now i am coming to a new chapter which is called marginal costing or variable costing we have considered the cost sheet cost sheet consists of total cost total sales and we have profit cost per unit profit per unit selling price per unit but friends in the case of marginal costing or variable costing we are coming to a different approach what is the different approach under the marginal costing techniques we are considering the cost into two components what are the two components that is fixed cost and variable cost fixed cost is always fixed variable cost is always variable that is the difference therefore when you consider the number of units manufactured in an organization the number of units 
produced in an organization, the profit is different. Suppose you are manufacturing only one unit, there is a huge loss. Suppose you are manufacturing 10,000 units, there is a huge profit. Why? If you consider the total costing technique, your profit is 1 pen 20 rupee, whether it is 100 pen or 1000 pens, 1 pen is 20 rupee, your profit is 20 rupee, selling price is 120 rupee, then cost is 100 rupee, profit is 20 rupee. That is under total costing techniques. Whereas marginal costing techniques, you are dividing the total cost of 100 rupee into two components. Let us say variable cost is 60 rupee, fixed cost is 40 rupee. If you manufacture only one pen, the variable cost of 60 rupee remains varying, but fixed cost of 40 rupee will be fixed. Whether you are manufacturing one pen or 1000 pens, your cost will be 40 rupee per unit. Whereas in the case of variable cost, it varies from 60 rupees to various units. 60 rupee will vary according to the number of units manufactured. This is what is called a marginal costing techniques. Under the marginal costing techniques, we are arriving a different scientific method which is called break-even analysis. We are coming to that area now. Break-even point. What do you mean by break-even point? A break-even point, which in short we call it as BEP, break-even point. A break-even point is a point at which there is no profit, no loss. At that point, there is no profit, there is no loss. That means the cost is equal to selling price. The cost, selling price minus cost is zero. It is a point at which there is no profit, no loss. That is what is called a break-even point. There, there are cases where we are taking decisions based on total costing techniques and that businessman will end up with a heavy loss because he has not considered the concept of fixed cost. There are, there are examples of fixed cost. Suppose we are traveling in a bus, let us say traveling a, from Bangalore to Kerala in a bus. The bus driver's salary is fixed. The depreciation on vehicle is fixed. The salary of the managing director of the transport corporation is fixed. Whereas the diesel price may be varying. The conducted salary is fixed. Suppose there are only one passenger the fixed cost of conductor, fixed cost of driver, fixed cost of administration remains the same. Only varying cost is diesel cost. That is based on the number of kilometers traveled. Therefore, suppose there are 50 passengers in a bus. The fixed cost is fixed. Variable cost is varying. The income is different. With regard to 50 passengers, they are getting an income of, let us say, 1000 rupees per head. 50 into 1000 is equal to 50,000 rupees for one trip. Whereas, if there is only one passenger, the, co the revenue is 1000 rupees. Whereas, 50 passengers, the revenue is 50,000 rupees. Out of 50,000, the driver's salary, the conductor's salary, the depreciation on the vehicle, 
then the administrative expense of the transport corporation all these things will be absorbed so the difference between fixed cost and variable cost variable cost varies fixed cost is fixed assuming a situation where in the case of indira gandhi national open university there are 100 students in the class the revenue generated out of 100 students let us say x amount the faculty salary the rent payable to the classrooms the electricity charges and all other things are fixed one student the electricity charges remains the same it is not very the rent of the classroom remains the same the faculty cost whether one student or 100 students it remains the same therefore the variable cost is only varying fixed cost is always fixed therefore you cannot compare or you cannot take a decision based on the the, the total costing method absolutely wrong it is not a scientific method it is a method which is not acceptable therefore marginal costing techniques is very very important with this let me uh, conclude today's class and we have 15 minutes more and those who are participating in this program anywhere in the world i am very happy to answer to your questions and uh, over to the participants for your questions and clarification for the next 15 minutes and you have been taking accountancy for a number of years to the students and uh, actually what is the ad more advantages uh, to the new students for the uh, the relevance of the revised uh, mba that is formerly to us ms4 now it has become mpc004 and uh, what are the new additions and uh, what are the new advantages for the present students uh, regarding the study of uh, some observations are welcome uh, as far as accounting and finance are concerned the syllabus prescribed by the university with regard to the revised uh, MMPC 04 is more or less same. There is no much difference. Our topics consist of financial accounting, uh, understanding of financial statements and uh, cost management cost accounting, financial and investment analysis, then finally financial decisions. Because in the area of finance, there is no much, uh, you know, uh, changes required. Because except some changes on account of international financial reporting standards, etc. Otherwise, the students of MBA program who how to learn MMPC 004, you are required to learn accounting framework, scope of accounting, emerging role of accounting, accounting and information system, role and activities of an accountant accounting personnel nature of function organization for accounting and finance accounting framework accounting concepts accounting standards changing nature of generally accepted accounting practices attempts towards standardization accounting standards in India, purpose of accounting information, 
accounting and control in the organization, profit and cash balance distinguished, uses of earnings information, uses of balance sheet. This is first part of the discussion. The second part of the discussion is understanding financial statements consists of conceptual basis of a balance sheet, constructing a balance sheet, balance sheet contents, form and classification of items, profit and loss account and balance sheet, the linkage, the measurement of income, preparation of profit and loss account, some indirect expenses, methods of depreciation, form of profit and loss account, cost of goods sold, methods of inventory valuation, the meaning of gross profit, what is the meaning of operating profit, what is the meaning of net profit, what is the meaning of working capital, what is the meaning of working capital requirement, what is the source of funds, what is the use of funds and factors affecting fund requirements, analysis of changes in working capital and fund flow statement. Sir, we have already considered these two chapters today, that is the accounting framework, meaning, etc. And second one is the understanding of financial statements, namely the balance sheet and profit and loss account. And today, again, we have started the third part that is called cost management or cost accounting, which consists of elements of cost. That is what is called the cost sheet. The components of total cost, we have already discussed the cost sheet classification of cost, then change the concepts of cost and absorption costing that is called a total costing and find then the subsequently we have discussed marginal costing which is called a variable costing, segregation of semi-variable cost, contribution we are going to discuss next time, break-even analysis I have briefly touched upon the break-even point. Then the unity, utility of marginal costing, which is called variable costing, limitations. What is cost volume profit analysis? Very, very important. Cost volume profit analysis, interplay and impact of factors in on profit, and a graph how to determine the break-even point, cost segregation, marginal cost and contribution, meaning of variances, variance that is called a standard costing and cost variances, direct material variances, labor variances, overhead variances, sales variances, control of variances and variances reporting. That is what we are going to discuss tomorrow. And finally, we have two more chapters which consists of financial and investment analysis, which consists of the study of classification of ratios, the norms of evaluation, computation and purpose with regard to managerial uses of primary ratio, concept of financial leverage, measures of financial leverage, effect of financial leverage, operating leverage, combined leverage, financial leverage and risk financial planning. And we are also going to discuss what is a budget. We are comparing the union budget with our day-to-day -day operational budget in our organization, a comparison. And what is the purpose of budget? What is the budgetary control? classification of budgets, control ratios, performance budgeting, 
zero based budgeting and the types of investment proposals what are the different types of investment proposals what is the needs for appraisal of project report methods of appraisal depreciation uh, and the tax calculation with regard to project analysis with regard to cost of capital with regard to appraisal of various projects based on modern techniques which is called discounted cash flow techniques and finally sir in this chapter we are also going to discuss depending upon the availability of time we have to consider financial decision how to take a decision what is the significance of working capital having discussed the meaning of working capital we are going to discuss how to utilize the working capital for the purpose of decision making operating cycle concepts of working capital kinds of working capital components of working capital importance of working capital management determinants of working capital approach to working capital measuring of working capital working capital management of various components with regard to cash management with regard to inventory management with regard to debtors management with regard to payables management and finally we will be considering the capital structure consists of various components of capital long term capital short term capital and what is the cost of capital and what is the dividend decision what are the factors affecting dividend decision in this regard sir there is no much changes with regard to the existing ms4 and the new mmpc 004 Thank you very much, sir, for your very clear and logical answer, which we have very much appreciated. And I, actually, the students who are learning uh, this accountancy and the MBA students, when they become managers in future, we are actually expecting wonders from them, getting this new uh, training and uh, concepts. Actually. in these days of unrest whenever there is an unrest the individual as well as, well as national development is affected very badly we know that usually it is told that the finance is the root of the nation if the finance is uh, is affected it is just like the tree which will be falling down if the roots are decayed there is no tree in the same way for the individual as well as the nation finance is very important and in our scriptures and in our indian tradition we know that the values of life which is called purushartha we have dharma artha kama moksha and the second place is given to finance so uh, finance is very important and in this whenever there are distressed we know that finance will be troubling the people and actually we have some uh, we are in crisis in this days we will give more concentration to the finance and so many the financial management etc is very beautifully given and thank you very much for your very precious talk and we will be attending and thanks to the students who are attending this talk and we will be we are uh, looking forward for the coming classes taken by you thank you sir thank you Good very time. much sir. thank you